What's going on everybody? And in this video, we're gonna be talking about seven different key things that I look for before I invest in any dividend stocks. It's gonna range from a number of different things. Some of these different ratios and aspects are very common to other investors and some of them are a little bit different. So make sure you stay tuned for this whole video. Before we go any further, I if you enjoy it, you make sure you give the video a thumbs up and you subscribe. You turn on post notification videos coming out every other day. You know how it goes, but this is currently my M1 Finance portfolio. You can get 100% free access to this by using the link in the description or comments below. It'll say dividend portfolio. You just click that link. It's 100% free to check it out. And if you have not already used M1 Finance already, sign up for an account. And if you use my link down below, you and me both will get $50 free as long as you deposit $100. And that is literally a 50% ROI already, which is incredible stuff. You can take that money, deposit it, and invest it into your account, or you can take it out and go do whatever you'd like. You can go buy Chick-fil-A if you'd like to. You can do whatever you want with that $50, but you can go see this dividend portfolio if you'd like. Now, let's get into the video and look at for what I look for in my dividend stocks. So the first thing, and I'm sure you guessed it, is the payout ratio. Now, the payout ratio is the amount, pretty much the percenting, percentage of earnings that a company makes that they pay out to their shareholders in dividends. So take, for example, this is Microsoft stock. They pay out a 27.05% payout ratio. What that means is Microsoft, let's say they just make, for simple math, $100 in net income, they are paying out $27.05 to their shareholders in dividends. And this company right here is 1OK, ticker OKE, it says they have a pay ratio of 109%, so what that means is that they're taking on debt and leverage so they can pay out these shareholders because they you see right here has a 6% dividend yield. You might think that's really, really good, which it is a very high yield, but it's not sustainable if you're going to be paying it with a pay ratio of 109%. And what I like to see is companies with a pay ratio below 70 to 80%. Now, just because a company has a pay ratio of exactly 81% does not mean I'm not going to invest in it. It depends on the company and you kind of have to be flexible in that sense that just because a company doesn't have one key metric that you're not going to invest in it. Now, if it's not a sustainable payout ratio and if the payout ratio is for a reason that you don't like, then stay away from it. But usually if it's over 70-80%, I tend to question the company a little bit stricter and I start to see maybe I should stray away from this one. Now, REITs are different because they're required to pay 90% of taxable income to their shareholders, so it's a little bit different when it comes to REITs. We're just talking about regular stocks in this. And usually, when a company has a super high pay ratio, it's an indicator that they are it's not sustainable and usually an indication of a poorly managed company. Now, let's go on to the second thing that I like to see in my stocks is good expected revenue earnings and growth. Now, there is no exact percentage that I like to see myself, but many investors like to see an aim for 5 to 15%. Now, you can just see right here, this is Microsoft. For 2022, they're expected to make $9.20 per share, and in 2023, they expect to make $10.53. That's good earnings growth. That's the kinds of companies that I like to invest in because it shows, hey, they're making more money, they're making more net income, more profit. What does that do? It brings more value to shareholders, which should relatively give them the opportunity to pay out more in dividends and to also bring more value to the market and the market should bring better share price appreciation. So you just want to see these companies make more money. The earnings right here on the bottom is Wells Fargo. You can see 2021, they're expected to make $4.66 per share. But in 2022, they expect to only make $3.70. I don't like to invest in companies with a declining earnings rate. So that is a big factor as it comes to investing in these companies because usually as a company's earnings go up, the share price will go up as well. As a company's earnings go down, the share price will go down as well. Now third, strong cash flow. Cash flow is super, super important to the financial health of a company. So if you're, not if you're investing in a company and it's not showing positive free cash flow, I'm staying away. I like to see this right here, Microsoft increasing free cash flow which is what i very very much like to see now this is nano dimensions on the bottom which does not even pay a dividend but you can see that this free cash flow is negative and you don't want to see that okay it depends 
it is a little bit different because I used to be invested in Nano Dimension, but I actually sold out my entire position recently, a few months ago. But some of my growth stocks, for example, they're riskier plays, but I believe there's growth potential. And I invest in these stocks. I'm a younger investor, and I have, I can bear that risk. So as long as I'm invested in these in these stocks for a dividend stock play and the dividend income, free cash flow is a no-brainer, and it needs to be positive and increasing. So I don't have a specific percent that I aim to see, like how much they're increasing their cash flow, free cash flow year by year, but uh, many investors like to see plus five percent. Now, a valuation that's not crazy. So what I mean by that is I don't want to see a company with a PE of 800. That's insane. A P ratio like that is crazy. Now, they say the average is about 17 to 18, but the market right now is insanely, like the PE ratio average right now, I want to say like 35, which is like historical highs. Okay, so nobody wants to buy a company that's overvalued. And it's one of the easiest ways to lose money in the market. When you think about it, when you're buying a stock, you are buying a company. So it's literally like, imagine you were the owner of a private equity firm, okay? Think about it like that just for simple math and so it grains in your brain. You're the owner of this private equity firm and an investor, an entrepreneur is like, hey, here's our company. We're doing this, 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 and that. And we think we're worth a billion dollars, but we only did $500,000 in revenue last year. Well, you're going to really think about that. And that's what a lot of these stocks can get. A lot of these stocks can be insanely overvalued. And you don't want to invest in companies like that that are super overvalued because that is a great way to just lose money in the market. And looking at a company's P.E. ratio, you want to look at it. It varies industry to industry from the average. So you want to look at it like if you're looking at Microsoft, you want to go compare it to Apple and different tech stocks. And if you're looking at Toronto Dominion Bank, you want to go look at other financial stocks like J.P. Morgan, Bank of America. And then you can also look at the S&P 500 in the market and see how they compare, seeing whether it's under, near value, or overvalued. You can just see right here that these definitely differ. You can see Toronto Dominion's P.E. Ford is 11.87, while Microsoft's is 37.37. So keep that in mind. Fifth, an economic moat. I want to see a company that has a good moat and has something over their competitors. So it's important to see that the companies that you're buying, that you're putting your hard earned money in, have something over their competition that makes them better. You want your stocks to have a long-term outlook and sustainability. And the only way they can do that is by having something over their competition that's going to keep them in business rather than their competition in the worst case scenario. So for example, Coca-Cola's brand name and customer loyalty, people love their beverages, it's a huge name. Anybody thinks about soda, you're probably thinking about Coca-Cola. And you can see right here on Morningstar Analysis, it says Coca-Cola's economic moat for this dividend stock is wide, which you really, really like to see. Now sixth, analyst and institutional sentiment. A lot of people might think I'm crazy for this one, and I'm not saying it's a make or break whenever it comes to me buying or selling a stock. But it does just give me more sentiment on what's going on with this stock and what is expected. So I really just like to see the price targets that people are expecting on this company. Are analysts trading the stock as a buy, a hold, a sell? What is analyst outlook on this stock? And I also like to see our institutional investors like hedge funds, different things like that, mutual funds. Are they buying or selling more shares? And what other stock research websites are giving the stock a fair value? For example, Morningstar. If you pay for Morningstar, they will give you, on most stocks, a fair value estimate on what they believe that stock's fair value is. Some other websites like Wall Street's in will do a discounted cash flow analysis on a select few stocks and tell you what they believe that fair value of that stock is. But don't let this be your number one priority for choosing to invest in a stock, for example. If you saw like a stock, just take for example stock XYZ, is trading at $10 a share, but you go see they have a price here at $20, don't let that be your thesis for buying the stock. It's nine times out of 10, not going to hit it if that is your 100% thesis. Like you have to go do your research, go look at the financials, go look at different things, the actual business model, different things like that. Don't let price target or institutions buying be your number one thesis. You need to know what you're buying. In seventh, stock history and future outlook. Now I know I'm not a fan of AT&T stock if you're watching my channel a lot you probably know that i'm not a fan either and this is just me using them as an example again 
I like to see how the stock has performed historically, and it gives me a feeling of what the market thinks of that company. Now, I know historical performance does not equal future performance. Do not let you think that. But what I, if I see a stock like this, I think, can this stock pick up from this downtrend or is it the end game? And can they keep the momentum going if they're an uptrending stock or are they plateauing? Are they overvalued? Are they about to start downtrending? I just like to see what does the chart look like? How have they performed historically? Do I think they can keep going up? Do I think they're going to start going down? Do I think they're going to be flat? What is my sentiment on that stock? But everybody, that's what I have for you in this video. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and you subscribe. You turn on those post notifications for videos coming out every other day. You know the drill. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Leave a comment if you have any other things that you would like to see in your dividend stocks, your dividend growth stocks. I was like, see what you guys are doing, what you guys are thinking. Check out M1 Finance if you want to get a free 50 bucks by using my link in the description below and depositing $100. Free money that they're handing out. I believe that this ends at the end of this, this promotion, ends at the end of December, if I'm not mistaken. But again, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I will see you at the next one.